Hello, everyone, and welcome to PAEA's January webinar, The Science, Art, and Mathematics of Tattooing. Tonight, we will hear from N. Jensen, who will provide insight into a relevant and enticing way to facilitate a STEAM learning experience through body art. Registered participants will receive a Google Form link via email after the event to fill out for their one hour back 48 credit. This webinar will be recorded and available at a later date on the PAEA website. Before we begin the webinar, we're asking participants to mute your microphones during the presentation, but you may keep your video on. Those controls are located in the bottom left corner of the controls bar. We are leaving it up to you to decide on your level of privacy as the recording will be housed on the PAEA website. We are also asking everyone to sign in on the chat roll. Please use the same name in which you registered for this event. The chat roll can be found along the bottom in the controls bar as well. Signing in will ensure that you receive the Act 48 link. Please feel free to add questions in the chat along the way, and we'll address the questions in the chat at the end of the presentation, or you may save them for the live Q&A period after the presentation. Let's get this webinar rolling. M, take it away. Thank you very much. You are so good at that. Wow. Like the, the world's best like flight attendant. <laughs> <But> like, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Hi, everybody. Yes. So I can't see the chat. So questions I will answer at the end. I will also I'm not going to take an hour for this. Um, I will leave plenty of time for us to kind of do like a more casual, um, more fluid Q&A because that's how I roll anyway. All right. Um, so welcome to the science, art, and mathematics of tattooing, an SEL approach to STEAM education. I realize that that title has two acronyms in it, and I will define those acronyms for you if you don't already know them. All right. So here's kind of our agenda for tonight. Um, I'm going to do a quick intro to myself. I'll tell you why using tattooing as inspiration could be helpful in your classroom or your art room. Um, I'll go over the timeline of this project I facilitated. Then I'm going to really get into separating out those interdisciplinary um, sections of this project. Okay, so I'll break them down individually, um, which is just kind of how my brain works. Um, and I think it might be beneficial to do it that way. All right. Um, and then I will share um, images of the of the students' work, um, as well as correspondence with families, because I understand that tattooing is sometimes still seen as taboo to people that might be um, from a different generation than me. Um, and I will also, I love to end with self-criticism, constructive self-criticism. Um, and so I will end with a self-assessment um, of how what I would do differently. So who am I? Hi, I'm Em. Um, I, I put my teaching Instagram handle there. If you would like to follow it, go for it. Um, I teach STEAM, not art. I teach STEAM at Martin Luther School. STEAM is an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. A lot of people have heard of STEM, but it is like that, but with an A in there, and the A stands for art. Um, I teach at Martin Luther School, which is an approved private school that practices a trauma-informed approach for students in need of behavioral and emotional support. Um, approved is a key word there because approved an approved private school implies that um, it is still funded by the state, um, but it is separate than it services the school districts, right? So if a student in the school districts, in the public school district, needs um, extra support that is not given in the school district or they feel like they cannot support them, um, the school has to still pay for them to go somewhere. So approved is like that that keyword there. Um, in addition to being a STEAM teacher, I'm also an artist myself, I'm a comedian, an angler. I like fishing a lot. Um, and I also DJ as well. Um, I, in my own personal practice, I make prints. I sculpt and I also make collages. Uh, it says XPAE board member. Um, that's because uh, I used to be the um, pre-service rep on the board. It was amazing. I loved it, but I took, you know, uh, two years doing that. But then I'm no longer in college anymore. So my, I felt like I, I needed to be, I needed that position to be filled by someone who was still in a pre-service role. Um, and also, I have tattoos, kind of hence what led me to facilitate this project with my students is the fact that I am a tattooed person. All right, so you can see some pictures there. I fish. Um, that picture of my students there painting a mural, that was a data visualization project. So I like to um, show that picture because I think that really sums up what a STEAM curriculum can look like. Um, so we took some data and we visualized it and then we put it on the walls in our school. Um, those are my sculpts, sculptures there. And then that is a picture of me. That was actually a promo for a DJ night. But you can see that I have a lot of tattoos there. 
All right. So why, why should you do this? What is the relevance of talking about tattooing in the classroom? So personal interest, I'm obviously tattooed and the students and paraprofessionals, um, since I work with a lot of other adults in my school environment, it's essentially like one adult per six students. So um, I, in a classroom of 12, I'll have two paraprofessionals that generally come with them to my classes. Um, so my students and those other adults that I work with see my tattoos and they ask questions. Um, how much did that cost? Did it hurt? How many do you have? My personal favorite. Will you tattoo me? No, I will not tattoo you. One, you are not 18 years old. Two, I'm not a licensed tattoo artist. But those are generally the questions I get from my students and my coworkers. Um, so the students are very interested in tattoos. Young people everywhere are interested in tattoos as it is becoming more and more, more, so more and more socially accepted. Um, however, a lot of my students' parents are tattooed or relatives or caretakers, siblings are tattooed. Um, and also, you know, there's this, this mystique of slash taboo idea of tattooing, right? It is like a it's kind of like, a, oh, my gosh, we're talking about this in school. Like it, it really pulls them in. OK, um, but ultimately it's this talking about tattooing and facilitating a tattooing project in your art room or your classroom um gives allows for a choice based um project that le leaves them with a real takeaway so in my case we ended up actually making temporary tattoos of their designs okay and <clears throat> I like to say I tricked them into having like an art criticism and aesthetics conversation of art for art's sake um meaning I want this it looks cool versus conceptual meaning versus I want this because it means something to me or it means a st it's a reminds me of this person that was important to me right so we have like these debates almost but I was able to do that very very seamlessly without any pushback because tattooing is cool um but then of course I'm a steam teacher so the main reason I did this was because there are so many elements of so many dif disciplines in tattooing this was the timeline I used. I did this um, last spring, mid, um, sorry, mid April to mid June. So at the very end of the year, um, wanted to do something fun to keep, because, you know, it's so hard to keep them engaged that time. Um, keep in mind, I was on a seven day rotation um, at my school. So that would, that means I would see like one class every seven days. Um, so I was able to stretch it out to like, six classes and that took up that amount of time from mid-April to mid-June um so it'll look different for you uh, depending on what your school schedule is like and how they they do all that stuff but um in my first class I always start with something that feels like it's not related to the project at all but it's we're out of our seats and we're doing something active because a lot of my students are super into sports um and I will talk more about that in the next slide, but we started with like a hula hoop circumference activity. Then in the second class, we would, re in the class following each class, we would review what we did in the previous class and then start something else. So in the second class, we would review circumference and then discuss historical context. So that's where I started talking about mandalas and sacred geometry, which of course I will get more into. Following class, review, begin design, following class. Oh, and uh, we would um, discuss the um, science and then following class, review that and continue, review that and continue, so on and so forth until the fin um, we would finish our project essentially. Um, so I started with the math. Um, and like I said, I like to start with a active up out of our seats, like exercise for all of my lessons. Um, I had told my students, we we're gonna be starting a tattoo project. Um, and at the time I was doing this, I trends changed so quickly. So I don't know what is popular right now, but at the time I was doing this, mandala sacred geometry style tattoos were really big on TikTok, really big on the internet, on Instagram. So I saw that and I was like, this is a great way for me to bring in geometry and into tattooing. So geometry and art together, right? So I kind of took that and ran with it with the math component. I knew it was also a good way for my students, if I did take this geometry mandala style approach to it, I knew it was also a great way for my students to end up with something that they would 
feel is aesthetically pleasing um that they would be proud of um because I felt like I felt like I, w- I was a little bit concerned about them being taking it and ru- taking this like open project and like not really knowing what to do um so I wanted to give them a clear directive um but something inspired by what I know that they've seen on the internet um to kind of pull them in right so I wanted to start with this like math geometry scaffolding up out of our seats active experiment all right so what I did was I got a hula hoop um actually in that first slide there I showed you the intro you can see the hula hoop in the background there next to those connects so I took that hula hoop and what I did was I was like listen we're going to be doing this project we're going to all end up with really cool geometry temporary tattoos that are inspired by mandalas and um I told you know um I didn't tell I was like if you don't know what a mandala is don't worry we're going to talk about that and you know I'll go more into that later but I was like, let's talk about what circumference is. And they're like, what? Boring. And I was like, no, trust me. And then what I did was I had them take the hula hoop. We all went outside and we all held hands. Um, And what we had to do was we had to like essentially get the hula hoop around the whole circumference of our class without breaking the the chain without bringing the circumference of the circle that we were in so it was like really active um we had to just get this hula hoop all around us and it was really silly we forgot even what we were doing but at the end of the class we like reviewed what circumference was um for all of these like interdisciplinary um when I go through like the math and the science and all that I'll always have a vocab list here for you and Jill will share the um sides with you at the end of this in the email following um, so you'll, you don't need to write these down. It'll get to you. But this is the vocab I used um, for this like math section of it. So we started with this collaborative circumference activity with the hula hoop. Um, and then we really talked about how geometry and those math concepts relate to mandalas, these like sacred geometric designs, okay? And the symbol of a circle and what that means both conceptually and like how that translates into this like greater idea of the universe and why people would use that as tattoo inspiration and this that and the other um but through all of this discussion we'd always kind of tie it back to these the diameter the radius um radial and bilateral symmetry right and so like we'd break down these beautiful designs that mean so much but also into these simple simplified math terms as well okay um so after we did that <clears throat> activity and we kind of laid down our basic math of vocabulary and how that relates to the design of mandalas um I want I was like listen next class we're going to move into the science of tattooing and this part I was like worried that they would not be into to my surprise this was the most this is what they were most interested in when it came to all of the disciplines that I taught them about within it came to tattooing they were so interested in like what happens to your body when you get a tattoo, right? So I showed them, <laughs> this is the vocab I use, you know, anatomy, epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous, cell regeneration, white blood cells, microphage, gel matrix, right? So we went through all the layers of the skin and I showed them, I was like, this is where your tattoo artist has to enter. Your tattoo artist has to go past the epidermis and into the dermis um, to in order for that tattoo to stay on you. Um, we talked about like, have you ever had a sunburn? Um, if you had a sunburn while you had a, ta- when you have a tattoo and the tattoo artist only put the tattoo into the epidermis, your tattoo would be removed by the sunburn, like when it peels off. So we talked about how the epidermis is constantly regenerating. And I was, I was like, does anyone in your family like have a tattoo that doesn't look good anymore? Or, you know what I mean? Like it might not have ever looked good. And we talked about like why that happens. Like either the tattoo artist went too far, maybe they went into the subcutaneous or they didn't go um, far enough and they were just in the epidermis right um so that was really cool and I'd always ask them like I'd always tell them like if I were to live forever eventually my tattoos would disappear because even though my tattoos are properly put in place in the dermis um th- your skin is constantly regenerating right so they thought that was super cool um that was probably like, the highlight of this whole project is when we were talking about the science of tattooing and then of course my background is art. I, you know, and I, I ended up in the steam role, which I'm so thankful for because my dad is an engineer. I always kind of knew I wanted to put the, everything together in that way, but, um, I am an an artist in my heart of hearts. So we spent a lot of time connecting the principles of design, um, to 
the other to to our tattoo designs obviously and it was really cool because they were like well this also relates to math because we were talking about geometry two weeks ago and I'm like yes all these things kind of come together right so what I did um I think I kind of mentioned this in the beginning I wanted them to end up with something that they would be proud of that they thought would look cool um and they would want to wear on their skin you know you I'm sure for those of you who teach are used to hearing students be like but I can't draw (laughs) <laughs> um so that's kind of why I went with this like geometry inspired thing because I was able to have these stencils and I would have them play around with them and realize how easy quote unquote it is to end up with something that looks super aesthetically pleasing that you would actually want to wear on your body like I showed them my fingers like and I have a lot of like ornamental style tattoos so we started with experimenting with stencils and then I'd had them plan their design with pencil um for this whole project what I did was I told them I was like you are gonna end up with a full color tattoo design on really really nice mixed media paper that you were going to plan with pencil you are going to use micron pen you're going to use like nice um uh, illust- illustration markers and colored pencils but then you will also end up with um a a line drawing essentially temporary tattoo of that design so um I was like listen like just so you know like the colors of your final design aren't going to transfer onto the um temporary tattoo that's why you're going to end up with a really really nice two-dimensional piece on this nice paper as well as a line temporary tattoo on your skin okay um so we started by planning our design with pencils, going into the micron pen and the nice coloring process. And then from there, once they are completely done, their like design that they really liked, um, I would make a photocopy of it and layer that um, photocopy on the transfer paper. Um, And I can also, what I'll have, I'll send it to Jill, the materials I used for this, but it's essentially, and she can send it out with my slides. it's the same stuff that professional tattoo artists use in their studios. It's like the carbon transfer um, stencil paper. Um, traditionally, well, like now tattoo artists use that with like a special, um, it's essentially like a printer that like, um, it's in the same process of like pr- uh, printmaking where it kind of like burns out the um, the lines um, onto the paper. Um, but I didn't have that device. So what I had students do was I would make a photocopy um, of their design and then I would layer that photocopy onto this carbon paper and have them go over the lines with ballpoint pen, therefore transfer- transferring that carbon um, material onto the um, paper that we would then use um, to apply onto their skin. I actually had, um, and I'll send this to Jill as well, um, the stuff that tattoo artists apply to your skin before putting the stencil on there to make it stick better it's called stencil stuff um and then we'd put the stuff on there place the carbon paper on um and on the wetted area peel up and ta-da they got their um design onto their arm so you can see here on the bottom right that's kind of what it looked like a full they'd end up with a full finished design in color and then they would end up with a line transfer of that onto their skin using this process and um, the way I kind of it was really fun because the way I kind of facilitated this was I was the tattoo artist and I would like put gloves on and have them come up and I would like <laughs> with every kid I'd like change gloves and maybe be like all right like where do you want it oh, obviously the rule was arms or legs and only legs if you were wearing shorts that day you know um protect yourself <laughs> as, a, as a teacher um but um uh that would have me like you know I, I'd have them like it was a great lesson in patience because I'd be like I can only do one at a time so you have to like find you have to work on your design on your nice paper like while I um call everyone up individually and be like where do you want it and we'd like talk about placement and the anatomy anatomy came back in in that way because it's like well that's gonna curve there so maybe we should put it down here like you know so that was really cool <clears throat> all right so um in the title of this presentation I also used the words the acronym SEL SEL stands for social emotional learning that is something that my school takes very seriously in our trauma-informed environment so because I work in this trauma-informed environment um it is super important that we are constantly teaching these SEL strategies through our lessons um and what's really cool is that this tattoo project 
allowed me to teach that in a multitude of ways. I was able to do that with not only the like mandala and sacred geometry stuff. Like we talked about art as, um, we talked about like traditional mandalas and how they're meant to be temporary. It's like, why would you put all of this work into something you can just blow away? Oh, because for these Tibetan monks, that's that's the meaning of of like essentially like freedom <laughs> of like the universe is that everything is imper- impermanent. Um, and so we talked about that. And then, you know, we talked about <laughs> why mandalas are a common subject in like adult coloring books and like oh because there's so many intricate lines and it's really really nice to like color them in it calms you down so like talk about like how that's a strategy to combat frustration right um but then also on this on the other side of this this whole idea of tattooing it was an amazing discussion of like what of ownership of your body like reimagining ownership of one's body what would you want on your body forever that represents your identity um a lot of my students unfortunately for very 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 horrible and unfortunate reasons have um maybe might have difficult relationships with their body um due to abuse and the beauty of this project was allowing them to put something that they want on their body um it it, you know it was a very it opened a window um to difficult combos um and topics but it did it in an approachable way because we were able to know that in the end of this we would end up with something really really cool um we also talked about racism and sexism in the tattoo world that's another kind of difficult topic that this project brought up um you know I told them I was like listen like I know a lot of tattoo artists I only know a handful I only know three female tattoo artists and I'm like I I call my friends um and I only know one tattoo artist of color essentially um and you know we talked about that like why that is and they thought that was super interesting and we we listened to some interviews with artists that I know um not personally but artists I follow on Instagram I would show them their Instagrams um but yeah like it was definitely at times there were classes that were uncomfortable and we were okay with that because they're used to that um unfortunately but also fortunately like that's what I love about my school and that's what I love about my students that we're able to have these kind of hard conversations like that's normal for us um so yeah cool I think this was next cool um so these are just some of the artists that um I showed them um I was like listen like and the reason I showed them these artists um is that I love this guy's quote in the middle um Kevin Leroy um that it is this guy really talks about how difficult it was for his his journey of being a black artist, um, black tattoo artist, and getting that um, apprenticeship, um, and how in order for him to make it to where he was, he really just had to, even though he was not an extrovert, make himself be an extrovert and put himself out there. Um, yeah, and so we talked about that. So we we did talk about so many different things in just six weeks. We just talked about every element of tattooing um and so this is the correspondence I sent to families um I knew I had to be like transparent because like I said tattooing is seen as taboo to a lot of people especially generations that are older than me um so what I did was I was as transparent as possible I emphasized the cross-curricular backbone of the entire project how that was the why right um, I broke down the materials, ingredients, safety. Like I made sure that all of the materials I was using abided by any kind of like um religious um like religious uh requirements for ingredients as well. Um, and made sure that everything was hypoallergenic, and I made sure they had a list of all of those ingredients. Um, I also made sure that the caretakers knew that this there was a a big emphasis on the student has a choice to participate in the actual applying to the skin part, right? They did not have to do that. That was not the point of the project. 
the point of the project was not to end up with their thing on with their design on their skin that was just a nice little bonus at the end um but I made sure that the caretakers knew that and then of course I'm always open to communication and questions so I uh, gave them my um contact information so here are some <clears throat> really cool examples I wanted to show you of how, how are all of this synthesized into an actual end product for some of these students um this student chose to not add color to their um final on paper design um but he he actually I think more was added to this after I even took this picture um was super interested in just you like the the flower of life in each petal representing a different part of his identity um but yeah, you can see that the top piece there is his work on paper. The bottom piece there uh, with the blue um, ink on that transparency paper, that is the stencil. And then that little cutout on the left is his arm. It's an image of his arm with that uh, design on there. Here are some more examples. Some kids took it to my surprise and my joy. Super abstract, really taking this idea of the mandala and what kind of things they can put in these sections to make it um tell a story or not at all I mean I I personally think that a lot of them did like make sure that there was something meaningful in there that talked about identity or whatever but I told them I was like it doesn't have to that's why we had all these conversations like the end of the day there can be art for art's sake and that's fine I'm not going to argue with you um, but I think that, that because of this whole um the tattooing thing and it being on your body they wanted to make sure that there was something meaningful to them um some other two others <clears throat> so you can see that um this like piece in the background on the left there that has like the yellow on the top that's just the other half of the carbon paper of the carbon transfer material um, and like I said, I will make sure that that ends up in the, the follow-up email as well, of the actual materials I used and ordered. They're really not that expensive. Um, you don't even have to get the stencil stuff, which is like the special sticky stuff I use to, um, the, the lotion I put on the skin before putting the uh, stencil on. You can use water or, I mean, a, like a, a scent-free lotion will be best, um, better than water, but the stencil stuff is primo. And I just wanted to make it special for them. There's one about um, sports because they love sports. And the one on the right, you can see that I, that's actually my arm wearing it. Um, that's because that student unfortunately couldn't finish the year due to um, <laughs> uh, a lot of my students are in and out of the criminal justice system. So he could not return to um, finish that and apply it onto his skin. So in honor of him, I put it on my skin. Um, and like I said, I, I love to end with a self-assessment, self-criticism moment. If I had more time and didn't and didn't do it at the very end of the year, um, I would have delved into the technology of tattooing, um, the actual tattoo machine, the um, scanners and the resizing that could go into math too, right? The mathematics of tattooing. I would totally take a class or two classes for that. And I would delve more into the business side of tattooing. We talked about tattoo artists and the actual like pipeline of apprenticeship to becoming a tattoo artist um becoming a licensed tattoo artist um but I would want to talk more about the differences between um because there's so many different kinds of tattoo artists you can work in a street shop where it's like walk-ins only or you could work in your own private studio and I want to talk about the pricing of how to price your work and your labor um I, I would have loved to bring in a tattoo artist that I know to talk about their practice. Um, oh, and this was an idea I had that I was like kicking myself for not thinking of sooner because so many of my students had know people who are tattooed, have parents, siblings who are tattooed. Some of them even have their own tattoos that were done way too, at way too young of an age. Um, I would have loved to do like a show and tell style thing where students either like bring in a picture of a tattoo of someone in the, on someone in their lives and tell a story about it um I think I'd actually want to do that at the beginning maybe of the whole project um like after a hula hoop thing maybe or even before that um I think that would have been a good scaffold to it um my school's really big into like collaboration amongst teachers so I could have collaborated with science and math teachers however I like to keep 
I like the idea that my class is separate from their core subjects. So sometimes I'm hesitant to that. I don't know if I would do that, but maybe I would, if I were to do this again, maybe I would partner with at least one of those um, teachers. But in conclusion, um, this project made a lasting impression on my students. They actually came into this new school year asking to, for more tattoo design opportunities, which is actually now something I use as a um, at my, my school uses kickboard. So it, we monitor our students' um, positivity, behavioral positivity rating. So if a student gets a certain positivity rating at the end of the day, they get to go to a choice activity. Um, so one of, when I'm someone who facilitates, facilitates one of those choice activities, I use the tattooing thing kind of as an incentive for that positivity rating. So um, I think depending on your student body, the concept of tattooing can be an extremely relevant and attractive way to discuss cross-curricular connections and the principal design and self-expression. Um, and I think that is all of my slides. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, oh, wait, cool. Yes, uh, Tanya. So I'm seeing Tanya's comment. You can use deodorant instead of sen stencil stuff. Absolutely. If you get just a um, speed stick, like the cheapest deodorant that they sell on the bottom shelf of CVS, um, that will work and it will stick on there. Um, just be careful with um, uh, allergies allergens right so like um it's sometimes it's hard to find a not scented version of that cheaper deodorant um so yeah just be careful with that but you can absolutely use deodorant <clears throat> but if, yeah, if anyone has any questions please let me know I apologize that I speak quickly yep feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions live or you can continue to type in the chat your choice Yeah, so Isabel, um, same. Uh, about one third of my student body is also in residential treatment um, on campus. Um, I'm curious if you have student... Do you mean like tattoo temporary or permanent? Because we've had both. <laughs> <laughs> we've had students um unfortunately come into school um with uh self-tattooing themselves but also um drawing on themselves as well so yeah, Isabel if you could clarify that that would be great did you have to run it by admin Chris yeah so I um did I ran it by the I went straight to the head honcho I went straight to the school the director of programming at my school and I told her what was going on um and she was like I just asked her I didn't I didn't ask for permission I asked for how I'm supposed to do this do you want me to get a written consent forms from character uh, educational decision makers uh prior to the um applying of the designs on the skin and she was like no you don't have to do that just send home um the correspondence uh the um the heads up about what you're doing so I didn't have to actually have to get approval from anyone I was just very transparent with the process um but I did I don't know if I had to run it by admin but I did I did And fortunately, I don't, and as well, going back to your question, um, <clears throat> I think, fortunately, it's not like this project that I did led to more of that. If anything, this project that I did led to less of that, because it really showed them how to do this in a way that is better, looks better, is better for your health, um, so yeah, in a way it combated the problems that we were having with student, students going out and getting tattoos or tattooing themselves or drawing on themselves as that and the other. Because, um, you know, even with temporary tattoos, like putting the stencil stuff on is much better than drawing on yourself with Sharpie. Um, a lot, and it looks cooler. <laughs> Any other questions? I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, Jill, do you want me to just grab those um, 
actually no i'll need a second to find the exact ones i was gonna say do you want me to just put everything in the chat now but maybe it'll just be better for you to send it afterwards so i can take some time to make sure i get the right things yep that's fine that way we have everything that you want to make sure that you get sent out yeah that's a great idea that's an incredible idea tanya yeah or like have them because one thing i want to do more with my curriculum is have them be more comfortable with trading and being less like precious about their work so maybe it's like you design the tattoo for that person's casted arm <laughs> and you design the like you know and everyone do like it's like a circle um that'd be really cool Yeah, and like I had, and that, the cool thing about this project too is that they kind of, at the end of it, like I had students, like I, I really emphasize, you don't have to put it on your skin. I just ask that you try this process. And I had students be like, you know, I don't want to put it on my skin, but if Terrell wants it, he can have my design. So that was cool too. And then Terrell be like, yeah, like I absolutely want that design. That looks cool. Oh, cool. Yep. And yeah, that's perfect with the Zentangle thing. Cause like I said, it's a great way to end up with something aesthetically pleasing. Um that looks awesome. Like it just looks like a tattoo. Any other questions, my friends? Yes, I am not seeing anything else pop up. Oh, no problem. Thank you for being here. I know that it's sometimes hard to dedicate your Sunday night to things that are teaching related. <laughs> yeah, we're going to send out another survey soon, maybe with the next newsletter, just reevaluating our the night that because this was Sunday nights at seven was the most popular request for when we originally were going to do webinars because you yeah. know people were rested and it was early enough and um so we're going to try to do another um survey soon to see if there's a, a different time that people seem to like better because I think sometimes people get the link and then they forget and they're like oh I missed a webinar but yeah and I think you were saying like also like Monday nights are an option so Book club happens on Monday nights too. So we're a little limited on how many nights, you know, we'd have a month for that. But yeah, Monday is definitely an option too. But yeah, we'll send out a survey in the next February or March newsletter to to reevaluate our webinar. It's time. And, and I think people are finally starting to sort of get out of the, yes, it is recorded. Um, a lot of people were just like, I'm so sick of Zoom. I don't want to be on the computer. And I think we're finally starting to get past some of that. So <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how we go but yeah we hopefully have a few more webinars coming up later this year and we're just trying to get people back into wanting to be on the zoom again so oh you know, yeah. that are out there and you see really cool stuff try to get people to present so you know that's a lot of you know the ways that we you know get our presenters by word of mouth and some people are just like hey like em she's always willing to volunteer something awesome so mm -hmm. but definitely if you see stuff out there let us know and we'll see if we can you know get stuff oh okay. it looks like isabella was back yes. on this connection hey. isabel yes and i'm not sure if you heard my response but yes you meant stick and pokes i was super open with them i have a stick and poke on my hand and i just you know i was never i i never shy away from the truth with them you know and i told them i was like if i could go back like i don't know if i would have tattooed myself with a sewing needle um but you know <laughs> but like i was saying i don't know if you heard me but if anything, this project didn't lead to more of that. It led to less of that. It led to a more informed way of ethical and responsible tattooing and how to go about it. But yeah, I believe you have a large issue with that. Fortunately, um, in the residential treatment at my school, they're very on top of the things that students have access to. So there's not a lot of that on the residential treatment. That usually happens more with our community kids.
All right, anything else from anybody else? I'm not seeing anything. So thank you, M, for such great information. We really hope that everyone enjoyed their time with us tonight. Remember to check your email later for the Act 48 link coming with M's resources. And unless anybody else has any other last minute questions, then I guess that's a wrap. I'm not seeing anything else. So good night, everyone. Thank you all. Make sure you guys get that info. Bye-bye.